<laughs> LCS ties account, please. We need you. <laughs> Vixen Bands for game number one. KT versus GE. And there's a Scion ban from KT. They're like, we have no idea how to play against that. We don't even want to deal with it. Wow, that really surprises me. I don't think GE would be trying that I know, right? <laughs> strategy again, but instead taking out a lot of these top lane tanks. And there's the Thresh up against Fixer. No surprise right there. Yeah, I think it's very important right now to test this, uh, Fixer especially because he has been so good on that thread and so la uh, Thresh rather and so lackluster on everything else. And what's the final ban for KT going to be? Well, LeBlanc and Lissandra is still up. This is a little bit of an odd ban phase. Well, it was strange that Rek'Sai was banned so early, isn't it? It's a little bit odd. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get it out of the way, it's, it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. What will they ban? Will be Callista. So okay. one of LeBlanc or Lissandra will be available. Yeah, those are pretty dangerous champions for either team to have. Yeah. And Prey hasn't played, of course, as many Callista games as other AD carries, but he has played some extremely impressive ones when he does pick it up. Okay, so going for that Rumble right off the bat, that has been one of Someday's top performing champions this season when he's been able to get it. But, That's a good takeaway. Uh, do you go for LeBlanc? Bam. Do you go to, for Lissandra here? KT has won, I believe, five out of their six Lissandra games when they've had that champion so far, so that mm -hmm. really does suit their all-in uh, CC heavy play style. Yeah. And the Sejuani first pick, in fact, this is 5.5, and I guess we're getting into it now. Lulu immediately grabbed, and Urgot locked in for GE Tigers as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go, guys. The blind <laughs> Urgot pick. Here we go. And you'd, you'd have to, can I make the assumption that it's going mid, Monty? Probably, yeah. I, okay, all right. I assume uh, it's going mid. Yeah, probably going mid. I, I assume this is an Urgot Juggermaw that's coming in. I'm not joking. You have insane poke, insane oh, yeah. siege with that. Smep should be on the Lulu in the top side. Let's and then they'll just... probably just go for uh, Janna Kogma. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, lock in the Cho'Gath. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go full point five. <laughs> full 5.5. <laughs> they say you never go full 5.5, but well, we do. We go hard here in the Corky. Going to be picked up by Arrow. And uh, who knows? That might be a support Aurelia. <laughs> it pains me to say. Yeah, we don't even know anymore, but probably yeah. it's going to be a top lane Aurelia. And yeah. then Corky could be Graves. Graves okay. Lucian. Yeah, just go for <clears throat> three AD carries. All right. Well, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, uh, AD is good, right? Attack damage. Sounds threatening. It's attacking with damage. <laughs> Yeah, not like magic damage. It's like, well, sometimes magic is fun. You know, sometimes it makes like uh, coins appear out of or rabbits thin air. come out of hats. You know, yeah, it doesn't sound as scary as attacking, right? Unless you're being attacked by like that rabbit from Monty Python. That's kind of scary. <laughs> but usually rabbits aren't that bad. Oh wow. Well, this is getting weird. If they do lock in Lissandra and Graves. Well, like we said, GE, they literally have no reason to try to win this match. And it goes beyond this season as well, too, because they can't even hope to uh, do any sort of impressive no-loss end of the season because SKT already won a season without losing a single game. Yeah, GE's never lost a match, but they have lost games, so they can't even, like, equal what SKT's done. So there's literally, <laughs> literally no reason at all why GE should care about winning this match other than pride. <laughs> it's true. Well, they may have some pride to regain after the disappointing IEM performance from them, so. Yeah, they got a lot of that back against CJ, though. Riding high on their minds right now. Now, uh, I guess it's Ur Urgot AD. Okay, sure, whatever. Maybe it's Urgot Jungle, though. I don't know anymore. Oh, you know, maybe it's Lulu support? Yeah, well, it's, it's almost certainly Lulu support here, but whether or not it's Urgot Lulu or Kogma, who the hell knows? Anyway. The Kogma, Lulu support. All right, Karthus and potentially a Janna pick coming in here. I think Leona would be better just because that would give you more hard CC in the side lanes. It would open up Score's ability to gank early, have Aurelia to gank four, have Leona to gank four, and then yeah. use the Karthus, but instead they will be taking the Janna. Looks like they are a bit nervous. Gorilla loves Soraka, by the way. This is something that people may not yes, know about. He plays him, a lot of, in solo queue. Yeah, he's also said that he really, really likes a champion, that he wants to bring her back, and in a situation like this, why not? Could go for uh, DJ Sona as well, too. If you're going to play Sona in a pro match, you might as well go with DJ Sona at this point. 
Well, if you are going to play Urgot, Sona is pretty good because you have yeah. you basically just double down on your poke right there. While Sona isn't good in most typical situations, that's a really hard hitting lane to deal with. It's a very scary two v two for everybody. Oh, or it could just be Nar. I guess it's Nar. All right. Okay. Nar it is, and so that will be an A G Jungle carry Mundo Urgot. looks like actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know, we said we said GE might be getting a little bit funky today, and uh, and they have. They've gotten funky. <laughs> KT is about to be taken to, to funky town. Well, you know, honestly, this is a really big problem for KT. This goes late against GE, and... Oh, uh, what the what? No, nah, they're going to I think back. they're just messing, yeah, I was going to say. You have two ultra tanks on this GE team against Corky. Mm -hmm. I mean... That is not an easy thing to get through in terms of pure HP. You also have an Urgot who's going to get super tanky also. Yeah. So this is a really obviously bizarre composition from GE, but KT will lack the damage in the late game, even though they do have a bit of percent health damage on Sejuani. They have a very quirky rocket proof team, don't they? Yeah, really quirky rocket proof. And the scary thing too, is that if anybody gets swapped back into the back line by Urgot, they're not going to be able to get through Nar Mundo Urgot in order to get back there um, to uh, try and finish off any of those kills. So a lot of single target crowd control coming in for GE. I have no idea, Doa, what this is going to look like. I haven't seen really anybody playing Mundo in jungle in Korean solo queue. Yeah, this is, I. you know, you got to assume they're kind of messing around. Will it be enough to beat KD? Yeah, probably. Let's get in the game and watch it anyway. It's going to be awesome. And welcome to Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster versus GE Tigers, Poro Riders, Sejuani. You know, you keep feeding Poros and Aram and eventually they blow up, but one didn't. One just kept growing. <laughs> and eventually Sejuani tamed it and has brought it to Summoner's Rift now. The freak Poro. Yep. That's right. Somebody okay. wants Lee to carry today. Oh, GE, why not go for an invade? Oh, yeah, oh, that's a lot wards. of wards. Yep, that's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, well, could use some more wards. I don't think that bush is warded enough. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we need vision. <laughs> See, the thing is, they know how many uh, wards Gorilla throws down, so they're trying to they're trying to outward in this game. I think it's impossible, though. A bit of an awkward start right here. I think this might, a, this might be a bit of this might be a bit of a silly match. Well, Lulu Urgot has a a lot of uh, a lot of uh, poke in the laning phase. You know what I'm hoping for, Doa? What? Urgot swapping in and then getting Lulu ulted. Yes. Because that's the thing. Oh, that's so good, actually. <laughs> that's oh, the man. thing about Urgot is with some of his changes, people are wondering, well, first off, he was always a lane bully, so he's got that going for him. But with the percent mana on his shield now, because he, he naturally is a champion that builds tier and a lot of mana in the first place. Yeah. With his armor, with his magic resist, with the effective HP that he's getting off of the wild growth, uh, because of his ult, his ult resists, he is just ridiculously tanky after he ults. So having that 10% mana into his shield additionally just gives him so many tools to work with right there. He's going to go ahead and take the little blue golem before he goes into lane. That's right. So that sign on the right says, G Tigers, thank you always. <laughs> she must not have seen I yet. <laughs> I would say thank you most of the time. Thank you all but one time. Thank you all but one very embarrassing time. It's all right. It, it, built their, it built their characters. <laughs> Don't think we're going to be seeing the same thing at MSI if they are fortunate enough to go. It did. You know, it's like one of those movies where the young protagonist like gets some sort of like special power or whatever, and he becomes like you know some superhero. But then he gets really cocky. You know. And then, then Uncle Ben dies. And so then you, you, things get serious, right? Green Goblin shows up. Oh no, it's your best friend's dad. Now what are you gonna do? See? So you come back stronger than ever. You end up, well, you end up killing your best friend's dad, but 
At, well, I guess that caused a lot of problems down the line. But, <laughs> but you're stronger. You're a stronger Spider-Man, and that's the lesson that GE Tigers took out of IEM Kedavitsa. And you save a lot of people doing it. So. Yep, that's right. And you get to date Mary Jane Watson. <laughs> Upside down kisses all around. The, the kids don't know what you're talking about anymore because they only watch the new one, though. Oh, you're right. That's, Is that crazy? Well, you know, it was a couple of years. It was time to reboot it, apparently. <laughs> you have to reboot after, like, four years now in Hollywood because they can't figure yeah. out any other way to make money. I, Creativity? Seriously. What's that? Let's bring back Star Wars again. Makes me sick, man. I mean, I think the new Star Wars movies are going to be good, <laughs> but, but anything else? No. No. Sad days. Oh, score. Don't die to blue. There we go. All right. He's got blue buff. That's my analytical update for you. Oh, Pray and Gorilla getting pushed back in this lane, despite being Urgot Lulu. Well, they're poke oriented. Now it's really going to start, though, because yeah. they can trade really well. You can just walk oh, up boy. with all these Lulu shields and hits that Acid Hunter, and you will take somebody down by 50% HP. <laughs> Glitter Lance Jeez. is coming in as well. Yeah, it's not going to be bad at level one. It starts getting bad at you know level two, three, like we're seeing right now. Yeah. The thing with Lulu is you do run out of mana fairly quickly, so Gorilla's got like a biscuit's worth left. A biscuit's well, left. First biscuit's worth. Biscuit's worth left. A biscuit mana. left. I would just say a, a biscuit, biscuit left, left of mana. Yep. Biscuit's worth. I don't know. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, pretty standard stuff. Well, KT has to do something early here. That's that's yeah. pretty much it. You go into late game against this team, and they just get so insanely tanky. We've seen Score play, you know, a little bit more passive junglers in the past too. Oh, no. didn't work out as well. Ooh, oh, boy. Uh -oh. oh, arrow! That Jana shield saving his life there actually. Still at his summoner heal, I suppose. Yeah, the tornado two knock up really important right there to avoid blowing any summoners. Pushes him out of lane, out of lane though. That's going to be some. Nice CS edge for a Prey's Prey, Urgot. Prey also started long swords. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect. Oh, okay, it's Cypher Dragon. Yeah, notice Lee's build too. Went for the Ruby Crystal uh, for this initial little bit extra HP right off the bat. So looks like he will be using that to tank out this dragon early after pushing him out. I mean, this is a good strategy from GE. Oh! oh! Stole the dragon. Score coming in. Make it a decent play there. He may pay for it with his life. In fact, he'll give first blood over to Kuro, but not bad. Yeah, stole the dragon. There we go. I actually think that may be more dangerous to give first blood to Kuro than to steal that dragon. Just yeah, because maybe. Unless you're really going to put a clock on it on the game as a result of that dragon, you could be in trouble. Like, Lee is going to die. No, he's not. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> If he would have turned and hit it one more time, I think he would have been no, able to get it. No, because he was using HP to throw his cleavers, so. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Uh, bad times for Lee. Well, we'll go get the Cinder early on, so we'll have some more AoE on the clear. Yeah, I suppose with Bami's Cinder, uh, suddenly Mundo can potentially clear very quickly. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, yeah? should be able. He's always been a pretty fast clearing jungler, so I imagine yeah. that he'll be able to. Clear, although he does have two points in Cleaver early. Uh, getting Bami Cinder as well before getting like uh, Trailblaze or anything like that too. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. interesting choice. I think it was good in the case of dealing with that dragon right there. Mm. Okay. But also remember that that's going to put him a little bit behind in gold because he's only going to get 15 per big camp. Right. Or big monsters, most of 30, plus 30. So okay. that's true. Ooh, Bye, smab. smab, smab. Why would you flash? Oh, smab. You see the requiem coming in. <laughs> Flashes and he was like, maybe I can dodge it. No, <laughs> you can't dodge Requiem. Uh, definitely shouldn't have flashed right there. It doesn't really matter if he dies. He can just return to lane yep. uh, with the teleport. Now he's down to summoner and makes it even easier for score once he hits six to gank at the top side. This is getting dangerous actually for GE a little bit. Well, I mean, what you mean, it's a game where GE gets behind early? What? <laughs> I can't believe that. Yeah, they're not too. They're a dragon in 300 gold, so. Yeah. So I'm not. So many not too worried. No kidding. Oh, he missed the corrosive charge. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that GE, even if they do get behind early again, they have the champions that can make those sort of plays that will get them back in. Obviously, Curls Lissandra can do it. 
Smeb gets a big gnarl. Yeah, KT is just, there's so much tankiness on this GE Tigers team, especially once we see the Abyssal and the Hourglass done on the Kuro as well. They've got wild yeah. growth. I, how is KT going to kill them late? All GE d needs to do is just wait. They just need to last, you know? Yep. And I mean, you could argue that already KT isn't putting enough pressure on GE Tigers yeah. in the lane. Yeah, it's it's early, but it's really hard to put pressure on this Urgot Lulu lane, that's yep. for sure. And they did find a kill up at top already, so. Yeah. And you can't really pressure lanes with Karthus. It's a little bit of a rough situation for them to even get rolling early, but this farm game, much exactly what GE is looking for as we move into about 10 minutes into this one. So KT not going to have that Requiem up for another minute or so until they can potentially make another play. Well, more farming going in. Girl's going to get the blue. Kind of a little bit dangerous, actually, if you're uh, giving away a buff with Bami's Cinder Mundo. Got to be really careful about that AoE. Uh oh, oh Gorilla. They're going to chase away Arrow and, f and uh, Fixer. I almost said Faker there. But no, that's definitely not Faker. Tomorrow, Doa. Yep. That's going to be a great match, man. <laughs> SKT versus Jinair. I can't wait. Wow, the Glitter Lance is really spot on for Gorilla so far this game. Oh, yeah. And you did see Lee there, just on the bottom side, giving a little bit of a backup. I'm surprised to see Score in bottom when he has his ultimate available right now and possibly could be securing a kill up in top onto Smeb's Gnar. Yeah, with no flash on Smeb right now, you'd think it'd be pretty easy to actually do that with multiple stuns, potentially. Yeah, he's pretty extended as well. And so. slows, yeah. Score. Well, he's going to meander up there, I suppose, but... Kuro's put a lot of damage onto the mid lane turret already. And Lee right here, just to take out a pink ward and head back off into his side of the jungle. So no disruption of the blue buff from KT Rolster. Yep. Well, it remains to be seen how effective Lee's Mundo is. A little bit of a fight in the top lane. Smeb using that ult. Dragging up in about a minute. So, oh, oh, damage from Someday is stunned. Stop settle for a second. There we go. Smeb in trouble again. Someday flashes for the kill. Oh, Smeb. Oh, Nagne. He used his Requiem too. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, that's what you got to do. And Score should be getting, trying to get some wards into the top side while he can right here. Has a good opportunity, especially with Kuro backing. Yeah. Well, with Requiem out of the way with this incoming dragon, that actually should make GE feel a little bit safer. I think the Gnarl might be down to just a bit. Yeah, it will be for a while, though. Yeah. They delay it long enough, they may be able to make a play on it, see if they can poke out somebody in the laning phase. But, well, it's getting co closer to that Trinity Force as well, so we'll see how the contest goes around here. GE needs to stay spread out, or else they will get hit by rockets and a Sejuani ultimate. Yep. You notice Smeb not choosing to teleport back into the top side right now, instead saving it. Some days uh, TP will not be up for the start of Dragon, however. Yeah, Ward's down for both sides, but the Viz Skirmisher is a little bit better for KD. Skirmisher Saber on Mundo. All right, he's looking for the 1v1s. He's looking for the fights. Honestly, it just makes him tank here. It's actually a good item on Karthus if he's going to face tank Karthus, uh, even oh, in the true. late game. That actually is not such a bad idea. I mean, he's not really going to be ganking this game. Hmm. Uh, he does have uh, that AOE, so Ranger is not going to be, you know, it'd be fine on him, obviously, but I think this is a better adaptation to dealing with having a big, big tank line against the Karthus later on in the game. That's a good point. Yeah, and he's already got the Juggernaut uh, enchantment, it looks like. So, or, I'm sorry, the Cinder Hulk, that's what it turned Cinder into. Cinder Hulk. Cinder Hulk. Oh, Smeb. Smeb just uh, starting out those two Doran's rings and still unable to survive right here, but that Requiem really hitting him hard. Yeah. Requiem uh, is not going to be up for a little while yet. Looks like GE Tiger's motioning towards that dragon right now. Well, they really want to take number two if they can, but it's a bit of a delicate dance right now. I'll be there. Who would still be there first? They like Can Vendo solo this? I wonder. 
he looks like he's trying. He's definitely trying right now. He's definitely started the dragon. He's at about half health. Pops that ultimate. There we go. Okay, Gorilla coming in as well. Arrow, oh boy. This is getting a little bit interesting here. They do get the dragon. Score tried to come in and take it, but wasn't able to pass the flash to get himself out of the dragon pit. Prey getting a good amount of damage onto Arrow in the process. So that was pretty clean overall. I'm actually surprised that Prey chose not to ult right there because they may have been able to pick up a kill by pulling someone out of Tri Brush, but oh, here we go. Gorilla going in, gets exhausted, but there's Lee. They hit Nagne with the cleaver as well. Gorilla comes in, and that is going to be a kill for Kuro. That's two for him now, and Lee survives via the wild growth. Yeah, they were just worried about their Requiem possibly coming in right there and yep. finishing off Mundo, so why not go ahead and wild growth him? So another kill, quick movement into the mid lane or to secure that. Karthus. Why not wait until uh, Requiem is cast before you wild growth them? Yeah. You yeah, have plenty of time. Yeah. That's true. Oh, uh -oh. Lee, run. There's a ward. He doesn't know. He should guess, actually, from that last kill that there may have been a ward mm -hmm. there. But tower goes down all the same. So GE unable to really do a lot of wave control or wave clearing with this Urgot. That is one of his problems if you're trying to hit that corrosive charge onto an enemy player, a champion, instead of the wave. Yep. Even then, obviously, Urgot not having exceptional wave clear in general. And that's going to be one of the weaknesses of, of this GE team is wave clear come the mid game. So. If KT can group here and play around this Trinity Force on Corky, they may actually be able to get a bunch of turrets, but they're just going to head to the bottom lane instead. Hmm. Now, we saw GE Tigers play pretty sloppy against Samsung in their match against him a bit before uh, IEM, and uh, they still came back and won those games. It was about as close as they could have to just sort of completely throwing a game here in Champions anyway. So we'll see how far they want to let this one go. Nice turret kill there from Kuro, not really risking anything, finding the right timing on his E to take out the pink ward. Hmm. KT moving up, I think this is smart, get the pink wards around mid, they have to start sieging. Again, poor wave clear on GE. Oh, sneaky. Yeah, they see Kuro there. They're going to get the knock up. There's score coming in. Oh, Kuro Missed over the, the wall. Bola. Yep, did not get the ult from Sejuani, and so they're going to have to go back to mid lane. Uh, he should have thrown that way sooner right there. I was waiting for he it. He yeah. tried to maximize the CZ chain after the tornado, but instead Kuro managed to get the E off and get out of there. So the bowl exploded on the other side of the wolf bit and only slowed him instead of actually stunning. Right. Well, in the meantime, Arrow just pushing up this bot lane. They've got good wards, actually, to keep Arrow safe here. And GE not having the most wards this game as well. But, uh, you know, they're not really getting into the enemy jungle at all, so. Yeah, KT really needs to push this. Get Corky into a lane where he can actually do something. I mean, Urgot is just farming at his tier two right now, so it's time to play aggressively somewhere else on the map. No dragon is up, someday's holding his own, so get into that mid lane and start pushing. Seems logical, doesn't it? We'll but KT, KT has does it. KT has problems uh, hitting their power spikes or hitting these assignments. So Yeah, I mean Arrow doesn't have his Sorf shoes yet, but he's still got that Trinity for us. He could still start to siege the mid lane, couldn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, they wanted to break the freeze down here, but. Uh, Nagne's running low on mana. Ooh. Oh, drove him over the wall. Flash ult on Nagne. Lee comes in. Nice cleaver, and I think Nagne is going to be taking a trip back to the fountain. So, right there. Uh, Corky had a chance just to go break the Urgot freeze at the tier two and then walk into mid lane while Nagne recalled and could have caught it right at tier one on the bottom side. So you have to start thinking ahead in that situation. Instead, GE just continually uses this Lissandra ult to kill Nagne in the mid lane. Third kill of the game already for Kuro. Yeah. That turret's getting a little Finally bit low Finally arrows as well. there now that Nagne is dead. So Nagne has a chance just to farm bottom side at the moment. Dragon in about a minute 30 now as well. So, I mean, this is the advantage that KT's going to get. They have to do something oh, with it. Smeb nearly taken out again. Oh, Smeb. Just one of those uh, one of those days where it's like, sorry, guys, I forgot my brain. 
Got his Randuin's done now, so he's got a good amount of tankiness. But someday has that crucial Trinity for us on Aurelia. You'll be doing a lot of damage once you get that done. Just stick around and auto the turret someday. Nope. I don't know why KT doesn't want to push towers right now. They it also put Dogne right back in the mid lane. But it is a bit strange. It's not like they're hoping to get more kills They need a lane snowball, like. Yeah. Well, this has been KT all season, right? You know, they, they look solid in lane, but then they just can't seem to make good team decisions. No, they just don't have a good idea or good team cohesion when it comes to strategy. In spite of their ability to outplay people in lanes in the last few weeks. It makes you wonder what the shot calling situation is like on that team. I don't know if it's one person or if they're just kind of doing a community thing. Well, uh, at the very least, score. at the very least, yeah, I would too. At the very least, you would think that they would get a lot of warts down around the Dragon Pit, but they only got a couple right here, and those will be easily cleared. In the meantime, GE with extensive vision yeah, inside of KT's in jungle. That's a really good ward right there, by the way. Yeah, I guess so. Missed the sweeping lens right in the nook by the brush behind the red buff. All right, GE Tigers. Who got the Rift Scuttler there? GE did. GE, okay. yeah. Yep. They got it. See if they can get the dragon as well. It is one apiece right now. Both teleports up in the top lane. So they can be down there at a moment's notice. Smeb, though, is uh, Meganar right now. So unless they're going to go in right now, they're not going to be able to have that for the dragon fight. A little bit of poke on the gorilla. But again, you can see those shields really doing a lot of work for GE. Yeah, just trying to keep on poking with cleavers and with Urgot right here, so they can get an angle onto the dragon. They eventually do chase KT out and have that speed trap. Oh, wow, Karthus nearly got ca caught right there. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, Lee even ulted to try to catch up. That didn't work, so now that one's going to be down. G Tigers might need to give up this dragon. Oh, they try to get him with the bola, but Sejuani's ult doesn't connect with Prey. Here comes the teleport. Looks like still. No fight coming in for GE. Really cautious play, actually. They're going after that mid lane turret. They're going to get it thanks to a mid yet and pop right over that wall. Yep, and look at that. They chase Kuro up in the mid lane and GE immediately turning onto that dragon. And is there anything KT can do to stop this? GE is going to back off for the moment. A little ways, a little ways until they have Meganar again. Kuro a little bit low. There's the ult on to Someday. If they can pick him off, this dragon will get easier. Nice ult from Fixer pushes people away. Doesn't save Someday though. Kuro picks up that kill. Meanwhile, Nagne getting really harassed by Lee. Score in the middle of everything. Wild Growth will save Kuro. And Requiem, is it going to be used? Not quite. Looks like nobody low enough. And that's just, again, you know, the problem with so many shields onto GE Tigers. I guess Lulu's dead right now, but Kuro still had a good amount of health. Right, and Gorilla did get the Wild Growth off before he died anyway. So KT yeah. not really able to contest this one. Trading three for one and only getting a support in return Ouch. after that fight. Uh, I mean... Someday tried to get the solo kill, but GE heads up, runs right back into the mid lane and turns it around. So GE Tigers goes from a slight deficit to about a 2,000 gold lead. Yep. Kuro and Someday right here going head to head. Kuro takes most of the damage, but there's the ultimate Q. And then watch this, E comes in. There's another Q and W to take him out. Score gets swapped in. Gorilla. Kites Nogne really well right there with Glitter Lance, preventing him from getting into most of his team while Lee on the backside, very tanky. Yeah, well, I think we saw that Skirmisher's Saber really uh, come in handy against Karthus in that fight. He was it's a very interesting item against Karthus, actually, if you have one of these yeah. tank junglers. I think that's very smart thinking by Lee as this game goes on. Interesting to pair with Mundo as well, yeah. Well, that top turret's still a little bit low, but Smeb should be able to clear out the wave. And so now two dragons for the GE Tigers, and they have gotten that gold lead, and this is kind of what we expect. You know, KT in this matchup, starting to struggle a little bit. GE's like, all right, finding little opportunities, coming back, getting the lead. Pretty par for the course as far as this matchup goes so far. What's really scary, Daw, is Prey already has this frozen heart done, uh, so yeah. that is going to be so helpful against someday in particular. Yep. 
looking good. GE is going to have pretty low damage, but the nice thing is they will have some percent HP damage coming out of Mundo. And they, they just uh, aren't going to die, too. Yeah, that's it. They, they basically could just grind you out by not dying. Yeah. It's the GE Tigers team comp just grind it out. <laughs> Play for that late game. Going pretty well for GE so far. Dodged a bit of a bullet in the early game. KT, I think, not really pressing these lanes as hard as they could have. Yeah. And now, actually, it's going to be them who start losing more of these outer turrets first. That's number two for GE. It's a bit surprising to see this from KT as well, too, because, oh, Kuro has to flash to try to get away from that one. Should be okay, but... You know, what is KT really afraid of? You know, why What's why be hesitant? You know, you're not getting into the playoffs. I don't know. You're I, not going to win this game unless you push it really hard, so why right. not? Right. There's no problem with having a Karthus in the side lane either in terms of farming, especially yeah. just playing back at a tier one and then swapping this Corky into mid. They really just didn't abuse GE's lack of, or their lack of wave clear and their lack of early game presence. Yep. As well as they could have, or really at all, honestly. I'm a bit disappointed in Prey, actually, because when you have a chance to play Giant Enemy Crab God, you play Giant Enemy Crab God. <laughs> I agree. It's way grosser. Yeah. It's the best. Prey. Going battle cast, I guess. I agree. That is a vastly inferior Ergot skin. When I when I make notes about the next broadcast at the GE Tigers, I'm going to be like, Prey, major mistake in game one, wrong skin on Ergot. Also, the uh, the Soviet Sejuani is way, the boar rider Sejuani or whatever, or the bear rider Sejuani is way better than this one. It's pretty cool. I find the bola actually a little bit hard to see with the skin. What do you think? I haven't, I hadn't really noticed. Oh. I kind of always. See? Maybe that's proving my point. Uh-oh, arrow lurking here in the brush. Kuro moving forward. No flash onto Kuro, but he's got yeah. a couple allies right with him on the flank. Lee yeah, arrow's just recalling. Gorilla. Now Prey there as well. So they're not even going to defend these towers. I guess not. KT just not really doing much of anything this game to stop GE. You know, this is what we've seen whenever KT plays against a better team, too. They, they It's not that they get beat. They just really seem to just roll over, you know? It's so weird because their win against Samsung was pretty decisive. Yeah. Uh, in terms of their laning phase. Now, did they make some mistakes in terms of their lane assignments? Yes, in game one, not so much in game two. I think they really closed it out pretty well, but they're not playing a dive composition. They're not playing one of those all-ins that they really shine with. Yeah, they won both games against Samsung in 32 minutes, so they were they were fast games, too. They yep. played very well. They closed it very well. And yeah, it well, they didn't Samsung, close the, the Juggernaut game well. They got picked off in they really closed it fast, <laughs> I guess. silly well. ways a lot of the time. That could have been like a 26-minute game, honestly. Mm. Uh, if they hadn't kept split pushing with Kogma, leaving him very vulnerable, leaving Kogma without Lulu, that was pretty awkward. I like to pray this game is like CS. What's that? <laughs> I'm Ergot. I don't need CS. I am the rise of AD carries. He has a hex drinker now too, just to help yep. deal with. I mean, I think it'll be great if he goes Maw. <laughs> I would love to see that. I mean, why not? Why not? I agree. Why yeah. not? Why the hell not? Why not? Why not play Urgot? And when you're playing him, why not go Mob Melmordius? I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gotten cooldown boots already, though. Oh, yeah. I think that you actually want to get that item pretty early to keep stacking your tier. I guess having the shield is nice, uh, especially if he was thinking, well, I'm not going to have time to buy before this next dragon. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Well, GE looking for number three right now. 30 seconds left. I think, uh, you know, there, there's been like some uh, policeman skins or like uh, officer skins or whatever. They need to make like a traffic officer ergot where instead of just green light, he's got like a traffic light <laughs> that goes uh, red, yellow, and green, depending on how he hits you with his acid hunter. I like it. That'd be cool. Oh, well, KT at least. Gets into the river right here. They're going to try. They're going to find this pink ward. Uh, GE Tigers. KT just looks so intimidated right now. That's the thing about KT is that I think it just gets into their heads sometimes to I play so these, some of these top-ranked teams because yep. they look like 
a very different team in this game. This team looks like a shot caller that gets scared very easily. That's what this team looks like. Whoever's calling the shots gets intimidated pretty quick. Yeah. You know, and, and underestimates leads too, I think. And power spikes. Yeah. All Too right, passive, just so are they actually going to make a play right here? Good flanking from Kuro. All right. Smab, he's about to go Meganar. They could do this. Oh, well, Kuro did not decide to come in. Smab is Meganar now, but GE, ever the safe team, is just going to pull back. Defend their mid lane turret. Wow, this has been an extremely passive game so far. Yeah, sadly. Makes me sad. Aurelius going for a Blade of the Ruined King. So, you, I mean, if you do Trinity Blade, you are committing really hard to a split push. Mm. She is not going to be very useful in team fights. Uh, she, especially if she gets ulted at all by Urgot. So. Yeah, you're going to get blown up pretty quick, yeah. Oh, here we go. Nice. Ult onto Arrow and Nagne from Kuro. He's going to zone you right away. Teleport coming in. Good wild growth to get the knockup onto GE. And actually, Score turning this one around a little bit. KT pushing GE back now. Prey so tanky back right up under the, the tower. turret. Look at that. They drew them under the mid turret, and Prey is still alive. That's another kill for them. Smab comes in for a stun on the Nagne Lee right there. If he can connect with the Cleaver, they do on the Arrow. Arrow in trouble now. GE turning it around, winning the team fight. Oh, oh and the flash Cleaver. Here comes Requiem. Is it enough? The Lulu Shield. Nope. It saved Lee. Wow, GE played that team fight so beautifully, pulling KT under the turret, turning it around. That That is what makes GE the best team in Korea right now. And that right there, too, just in terms of uh, they didn't have the best engage no. if, because they didn't have enough follow-up right away. Kuro ults himself. Man, he gets so much damage on everybody right there. Fixer's, uh, Fixer's monsoon was awful, by the way. Yeah. Uh, really didn't do much at all. And they did have a bit of a late port right there, but Prey, they get a little bit greedy, and that's a fantastic Gnarl right under the turret to take him out. And oh. this is the thing is, if you're KT, you just can't kill GE. They're too tanky at this point. How are you supposed to deal with this? Arrow just gets chased down through a minion wave, and there's a flash cleaver huh. from Lee. Mundo fire. And here we go. There's a Lulu shield. Go ahead and finish that one off. Yep. Wow. Okay. That was, that was an impressive team fight, to say the least. Man, Prey got off a really nice uh, position reverser onto Someday as well, too. I think that's what gave him the tankiness to kite back into yep. the turret like that. Really well done. And he, that just baits you so beautifully. If, you, if you're not playing, oh, yeah. it's like Poppy. <laughs> you can get baited so easily due to uh, hidden tankiness like Poppy's passive. And they definitely overcommitted for that one. Yep. Well, Too tanky now. now. Now GE Tigers has that lead, and, and uh, it's a pretty significant one. Seems unlikely KD is going to be able to bring it back at all. I think could just try this Baron a million times too, thanks oh, yeah. to their tankiness. Well, I mean, ults are Pretty much up for everybody, are up for everybody, so why not just bait Baron until you win a team fight or just get it? Because they pretty much are guaranteed to win the team fights right now. There's just very little damage that KT can do. Well, it's also Arrow decided to go for Bloodthirster this game. Oh, yeah, you're right. He needs BT right now. He needs something that, to deal with this, but. Oh, here we go. All coming in. They jump on the Nagne. Meanwhile, KT coming from the side. Nice Sejuani ult. Kuro's going to go ahead and zone you, stay alive for a bit longer. Huge Gnar ult comes in, though, from Smeb. And there's a double kill for Nagne, but can GE turn this one around? Looks like yes. they can all over <laughs> Arrow. Yeah, they are so tanky. And look at that. They lost Gorilla. They lost Kuro. So basically, they lost the fragile members of the team. Then, then Urgot and Gnar and uh, Dr. Mundo. Came back and cleaned it up. There's just no way you can kill them. That's the problem. Yep. You can hit a great four-man Sejuani ult like Score managed to land in that last fight. See, this but, is what KT needed to be doing much earlier. I mean, and honestly, if Arrow had had a blade, that may have gone a little bit differently, but now they're just going to be able to slowly, ever so slowly, deal with this Baron. Maybe not so slowly, actually. Well, I mean, it's pretty slow for 32 minutes into this game considering the lead of 6,000 gold that GE has. 
Oh, they're gonna get it either way. All right. There it is. GE Tigers with a Baron on everybody too, because the death timers are fairly short right now. And KT suddenly find themselves 8,000 gold behind. Yes, the Maw. It's done. Yeah, and you don't really need to go for the Last Whisper right here because it's no. just not going to be too effective without any high armor values. Yeah. Uh, except for on score. I mean, nobody else has armor, like, at all. This so is, uh, this just is go for the Mob Malmortius. You're going to hit like a truck once they try and burst you down. Yeah, then you go for Black Cleaver. That's what you do <laughs> for Urgot. A little bit more tankiness. You get the it's armor actually, tag. It's actually a fine build on Urgot. Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be fine. You don't need that last whisper right now. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't actually have anybody who's really going to be able to follow up with physical damage to yeah, make additional use of that Black Cleaver. But Who cares? It's cool. When else are you going to At the same time, it's, it's a lot more efficient to have the Black Cleaver than it is to have the last whisper when there's only a Randuins on the enemy team. So. He's had the Brutalizer for a long time. I think we're going to see Black Cleaver. We usually do. We usually do on our gut. So, yep. all right. Up, oh, they're coming in again. Fixer's caught. Oh, well, they get the flash and alt on oh, the Nagne. Oh. All right, sure, why not? Yeah, Nagne's like, here, I'll be, I'll be alted. Wow. So right there, Nagne was not thinking that the target was going to be him. I guess not. Coming in, he thought they were fixated on Fixer, but instead, he's changing their approach a little bit through yeah. that one, catching him right out in front of that turret and easily taking him down. Curl walks up and he's like, oh, Karthus, even better. Thanks. And there goes tier two in mid. GE Tigers is uh, up four to two now in turrets. Going for dragon number four at the same yep. time. That's right. The scary thing is that if Score hadn't stolen the first one, this would be Dragon 5 by now for GE Tigers. Yeah, that actually, it really should be, actually. That actually did end up being quite impactful for KT. Yeah. It's not going to save him, but it's going to make this game last about maybe 5 to 10 minutes longer. KT just got really outpicked here. They don't have the tools to deal the damage because GE has the burst to take out Karthus, which is very important. And then they're just... There isn't enough damage and survivability. Someday they could take oh. him out nearly instantly as well due to his build, and he hasn't been. Oh boy. Wow, Position reverse around a fixer, because why not? That was gonna waste. get the kill there, oh, arrow. Nice. You can be wasteful when you're uh, 10,000 gold ahead and have Baron buff, four dragons, and Urgot, Dr. Mundo, everybody else. Cool, at least not even taking damage from the tower. Yeah, yeah, he's actually not. Just a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Pop that ult. You're okay. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right about KT though. It's like we see a, we see a match last week, and yeah, they were against Samsung, but at least they looked aggressive. Yeah. They just kind of rolled over and died right here. Even when at certain points earlier on in this game, I think they had a very legitimate chance of taking out the outer ring of towers and abusing the potential of their siege, but it just didn't happen. I mean, we know KT is capable of having good engages, as we see GE take out this first inhibitor. And here we go. Score coming in. Trying to make something happen there, but Nagne getting so low already. Getting in the back line, so it exhausts on to Kuro, but GE already turning this one around. Killing Karthus so fast, wild growth on to Prey. He's a big, scary Urgot, and he's coming to kill the rest of your team. Score, getting hit with that Acid Hunter. Dodges the building, though, but it doesn't matter. GE, you know, normally I would say that team is low on health, but they are just so tanky that they can still sit around here. Kuro getting extremely low, ults on to Score. There's another kill for GE, Smeb. Jumping in, and they're going to let Someday get back to turret. Smeb's like, yeah, I'll just take some tower hits on the way out. The laser feels so good. Well, they finally will back out of this, but if we look at... Uh, oh, uh, oh, okay, nice Someday. Port. Nice port, actually, by Someday. Yeah, making some plays, getting the double kill. And can he get back to Arrow? Arrow coming in. They're going to try to turn it around, but now it's just Arrow against Smeb, who goes Meganar. Uh-oh. Well... Someday you tried. It's two kills. It wasn't bad. Uh, even though he has that blade, it was and, too little, and too Trinity late. Trinity Force. Yeah, it's just not not working out for him. In terms of once he gets in the middle of all those tanks, they could just body block him. Right. And eventually do enough damage. Okay, Banner of Command again on the grill. You know, whatever. Nice. Hey, I've been building it a lot lately, actually. Support. It's fun stuff. Prey goes in, has to flash out immediately. Becomes Giant Urgot. Due to the wild growth, a little bit of a miscommunication right there. There is the Requiem coming in, just a tickling onto these mega tanks right now. And Arrow tries to get back. See them 
force a flash right there thanks to the glacial trail from Cassandra. Kuro has so many shields. Yep. And heals that uh, he ends up staying up right there, but everyone else finally deciding it's time to exit the base. You know what, Doe? I really hope we see the uh, I hope we see the Iron Elixir onto Urgot. Because if you ult in the enemy team, you can help everybody get into and alongside you faster. How about Righteous Glory on yeah. Urgot instead? Nah, I wanna see <laughs> I wanna see Iron Elixir and then Wild Growth. I wanna see how big Urgot can get. That's my goal this game. He could get pretty big. We'll see Big Mundo, maybe. We'll see a big cannon minion right there with the Banner of Command. Oh yeah, the crowd just realized it's Banner of Command time. I actually really like it in solo queue now because you can control waves when your team is off doing stupid things. Which is almost all the time in solo yeah, queue. Yeah, so, so I really yeah. recommend building it. You get the Aegis, you get that MR for your team, and then you can uh, mitigate the idiocy. Also, people don't expect it, so you get towers for free. Yeah, exactly. It's a goodbye. Just like, uh, it's a different kind of goodbye than we're going to see. <laughs> Momentarily. For, uh, in this game, yeah. We're going to say goodbye to KT in game number one, but Banner of Command is a goodbye in solo queue. Pray didn't get Iron Elixir. Damn it, Doa. I don't know. I don't know what to do about these guys. They're hopeless. GG. Never going to win Worlds now. <laughs> this is a very funny composition, though. It is. I mean, you can tell GE Tigers. They're intelligent, but they are kind of messing around, you know? I, I think, honestly, it's good against what KT is doing. But it is, but it's just not orthodox. As we see GE Tigers just steamroll KT. Nagne thrown back against his own inhibitor. And Wild Growth onto Smab. That is a mega mega nar as Kuro picks up that double kill and chases <laughs> the rest of KT away. And that did basically nothing. Requiem, its damage was a dream. <laughs> okay, there goes the first Nexus turret. Second Nexus turret getting focused down as well. And so the GE Tigers, having a good time with a smart but unorthodox composition, will take down game one in style. There goes GG. Well, I hope we don't see a, a serious GE Tigers for the rest of the season, Doa, but legitimately I think that composition was good against KT, what KT did. Yeah. Did it have some obvious flaws, such as insane lack of wave clear and <laughs> early pressure? Absolutely. You know, it's not like Lee was, Lee was trying to follow up on ults uh, in the mid lane, but that's about the only place yeah. that he was able to get some ganks in, and certainly not a chilling smite. It does make things rather difficult to gank as Mundo. No. But, you know, if KT is not going to abuse when and how GE is weak, you're going to end up with a late game like that one where you just can't kill anybody at all. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, just really scared play calling for KT. 